Hi everyone, Tucker Jobs Gaming and the tactic behind me is FIFA Kingpin's Brand Can Walk Tactic. Uh, I don't know where the name comes from, but uh, each to your own, each to your own. So hopefully this uh, this tactic does well with the teams that I have selected and uh, stay tuned for the video for the full instructions just in case you can't download the tactic. Right then everyone, welcome back. So this is the Brand Can Walk Formation. It's the tactic obviously by FIFA Kingpin. Uh, he asked me to do this over uh, my YouTube channel. So obviously uploaded it, on, uploaded it on FM Base if you can find it. It's on there as well guys. So uh, yeah, the shape obviously, if you've known the V-shape formation, uh, one of my favourite formations actually, this is kind of like the opposite. So instead of the two midfielders in the centre and then the one defensive midfielder, it's just the other way around. So let's get on with the player instructions then. So complete forward. Inside forward left, winger right, advanced playmaker center, four winner midfielder left, deep line playmaker right, wing back left, wing back right, four plane defender left, four plane defender right, and the sweeper keeper. So let's get on with the set piece instructions. Corners then, defending right and left, and attacking left and right is using the Beowulf 442 set piece uh, instructions which uh, hopefully might work in his favor uh, set piece uh, free kicks then so defending right and left and attacking left and right throwing instructions defending right and left and attacking left and right also the Beowulf 442 uh, throwing instructions there as well so it's got a little bit of inspiration from them which is good. All right, good tactic, the Beowulf from that. So uh, check them out. So yeah, let's get on then with the tactic itself. It's tick attacker, attacking mentality in possession. We're looking at a fairly wide pass into space with overlapping left and right with a play out defence. Slightly shorter pass and directness with a higher tempo. Work ball into box with low crosses and running at the defence in the final third. In transition. Counter press and counter, two uh, obvious instructions that are being used at the minute. Distribute to full backs and throw it long for the goalkeeper. Out of possession, using offside trap, much higher line of engagement with a higher defensive line. Force opposition outside, so it's the uh, narrow defensive system. Use tighter marking with more urgent press intensity with prevent short goalkeeper distribution and the get stuck in instruction is on. So the teams that are actually using this tactic, there's a couple of top teams, mid teams, all right, low teams, all right, top... Yeah, a few. So there's Anderlecht OHL in Belgium, Manchester United in the Premier League, Barcelona and Valencia in Spain. So hopefully everything goes well for all of these teams involved and we get some decent numbers and decent results as well. So uh, yeah, so Anderlecht's starting 11. It will change obviously because I don't lock in the team. So it's all up to the assistant manager who plays in what positions. Hopefully he picks the right choices. OHL, Manchester United, Barcelona, and finally Valencia. So uh, yeah, oh, this team hasn't been picked long. So all I do is pretty much best eleven. So it always changes. Well, they don't stay like that. Obviously, rotation is a big part of football manager. Uh, but that is the supposed best eleven for uh, Valencia. So um, yeah, let's get on to the end of the season. Get some numbers. Get some results. And I'll see you then. Right then, welcome back. So let's start off in the Belgian Pro League. All right, and OHL actually beat the top dogs who are also participating in the test and elect uh, in the league. They came second and elect came third. That's absolutely insane. Obviously, OHL are predicted to come 11th, so they're pretty much a, a mid to lowish kind of team. All right, not really much is known about them. Uh, obviously, when you've got the likes of Club Bruges, Anderlecht, Standard, Ghent, Ghent, and all them. Yeah, they're not really a well-known Belgian team. So to actually be Anderlecht, absolutely fantastic. Nice tactic, FIFA Kingpin. Go on. Right, so let's have a look at some of the player stats then. So unfortunately, not a lot of players got in there. All right, but we've got a couple from uh, OHL and obviously one from Anderlecht. So Henry, or I'm going if he's French, yeah, Henri. Okay, uh, came third with goals with 13 for OHL. And then we've got uh, Denor, OHL again, player of the matches, joint first with six. And then we have here this Van Crombrudge. Van Crombrudge? 
<laughs> and Romo for Anderlecht and OHL for clean sheets. The goalkeepers come in second and third with 20 clean sheets for Anderlecht and 19 for OHL. So yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic tactic for OHL. And the good thing about this tactic with the complete forward is uh, watching some of the games. When you're sitting back, when you're playing, you can see your striker pretty much coming back and acting as an attacking midfielder. But then as soon as you get into the final third, you can see him progress forward as a striker and that's always fun to watch obviously with complete strikers they've got to be able to do it all and it's actually nice seeing them transition from a deep line or false nine into an advanced forward into a po into a poacher into a target man who needs to be so uh, yeah it's nice seeing that uh, so let's have a look at Anderlex competitions and so they were the winner of the belgium cup so they didn't win the league oh before i do that actually i've just noticed uh Pro, uh, Belgian Pro League, obviously you get to a certain position, you enter a championship phase, all right, championship group with the top teams. And then in the final of that, OHL actually came fourth with Anderlecht coming third in that. All right, so overall, Anderlecht beat OHL. But when it comes just to the league, OHL beat Anderlecht. All right, so uh, obviously they play each other all again uh, in that second phase. And yeah, Anderlecht just, uh, just managed to squeeze it. So yeah. Let's go back to the competitions. So, Belgium Cup, they won it in the final against Club Bruges 2-0. Well done to Anderlecht there. And, uh, yeah, you can see here the uh, championship group there. Anderlecht actually came third and qualified for Europe. Where's OHL? Europe too. So, good go in there. Good go in there. Let's have a look at the squad. Best player was... Here we go. So, we have Miazga. Miazga. All right, 44 apps, three goals, zero assists, five player of the matches. And then, <laughs> yeah, all right, like I'm going to even, I'm just bogged down. I'm just going to call him bogged down. I'm not even going to try that. Mickey Lichenko. Mickey Lichenko. Mickey Lichenko. Yeah, not, nice, uh, nice left back though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he uh, came second with 7.14. Your biggest goal scorers was um, Amicha, all right, 15 and 5. Then you got Tao, 8 and 3. Bundu, 7 and 2, and so on and so forth. So the numbers aren't massive for a team like Anderlecht in that league, for them being a top team. But it was all right. They, uh, at the end of the day, do you want a game breaking tactic? Obviously, some people call them game breaking tactics or not. Uh, and this seems like a pretty good tactic so far. So let's have a look at the team report then. So, analyst report on a whole, you're pretty average, but you're very defensive. All right, well done there. You've conceded less than uh, obviously on average, which is great. Uh, scoring, let's have a look at your goals here. Look, you can see aggressive and wasteful. So we're getting there, we're getting forward, but we're not actually scoring. That can be down to quality or that can be down to their uh, goalkeeper, their defenders. Uh, goals that we've scored then 26 play shots 15 powerful shots one killed shot two lobs nine headers one free kick and 10 penalties and then assists in the last 50 games 49 matches uh, 12 came from set pieces and the rest of them were all from open play and then conceding there's actually not a lot of information there but we are on the quiet and impenetrable, which is where you want to be, definitely, on the defensive efficiency chart. And the goal scored against us, 17 play shots, four powerful shots, two headers, two penalties. That's it. That is it. In all competitions, in the last 49 matches, they only scored 21, 22, 23, 20, 25 goals. 25 goals. What a defensive tactic. Well done there. Uh, nice going. Good numbers. So, uh, yeah, next team up then is OHL, who actually beat Anderlecht in the original league, obviously lost that in the Champions uh, group phase. But uh, let's have a look at their competitions then. So Euro Cup 2, not counting that, they've just entered it. So Belgium caught the went out, Club Bruges in the sixth round. So that's a shame that they didn't get further, considering they did pretty good in the league itself. So yeah, you can't really moan with OHL being the team that's predicted 11th, obviously mid to low table. Um, so yeah, they did they did good regardless. All right, they did good regardless. Let's have a look at their squad. Best player was Limbombi. All right, yeah, he only played one game, not counting him. He only played four. All right, there we go. Jamelka, uh, 38 games, one goal, one at 7.14. Okay, and then we've got uh, Denor, 
four and two. Your biggest goal scorers in the team was Armory and Al Tamari, 13 and 11. The rest of them didn't get over 10 goals, but that's acceptable, all right? You've got one striker up front, and he's the one scoring the most goals, all right? So that's what you want. Assists, then biggest creators, Al Tamari, Armory, and Bessie, two, uh, seven, five, and five. And then you got Martins, four. Uh, Malinov three okay so again they're not big numbers but it's pretty decent play obviously it looks like you focus on the wings some of the obviously a lot of the highlights I saw it was all coming from the wings from the inside forwards and the wingers um, but it is also coming through the middle especially when the complete forward drops back into an attacking forward role or an attacking midfielder role and then that leaves the inside forwards and wingers that kind of come in and then he slots it through to them. So, uh, yeah. End of the day. Did its job. Did its job for OHL. They finished in a brilliant position. Let's have a look at the team report. So, on a whole, you're pretty average. Well, you're above average, obviously. Your passing's better. Your goals are better. Your conceding's better. But it's not outstandingly better like some tests that I've seen. But you're still performing better than the whole league. Obviously, minus a few teams, like. But this is just on average. So, uh, yeah, you're doing pretty well. Scoring then, so where are you here? Aggressive and clinical, that's where you want to be, definitely. OHL has done fantastic uh, for the team that they are. They're, they're, they're doing well. At the end of the day, aggressive and clinical is where you want to be. And um, quiet and impenetrable on the defensive side is also where you want to be. So let's have a look at the goals then. 39 play shots, 13 powerful shots, 1 killed shot, 3 headers, and 6 penalties. The assists, uh, 16 came from set pieces and the rest were all from open play. So you can see that all these numbers are lower than other tactics but he has obviously created a tactic fifa kingpin um where it seems a lot more realistic at the end of the day some strikers top strikers in the world are happy when they're getting 20 20 goals 21 22 goals are like yeah that is perfect for a world-class striker um regardless of the players like messi and ronaldo who used to get 40 45 and so on so in realistic terms, like your Canes and stuff like that, where they're getting 22, that's acceptable. So why aren't it acceptable that you've got players or strikers getting 15, 16 in a lower league, in a, in a lower quality players? So realist, realism, definitely, yeah. Uh, scoring then and conceding. So we are on the conceding, quiet and leaky, yeah. So we're not getting a lot of shots against us, but they are going in uh, when they are. Uh, being fired at the goal which is a shame but again you can count that as a quality thing all right this is ohl we're talking about we're not a big team in this league so they're gonna go in at the end of the day and uh goal scored against us then 24 play shots eight powerful shots one lob five headers and two free kicks so next up manchester united the sole team in the premier league and um the basically a top dog I had to have a couple of top dogs, a couple of mediums and smalls. Uh, so people moan, obviously, that I'm using big teams. But I've varied it. OHL, and you've got Valencia there, mid-table team as well. It's, I haven't really got any under-underdogs in there, any relegation favourites in there. Uh, I wish I did. I, I apologise. All right, but I like to vary it a little bit. So Manchester United, how did you do? You came second, which is obviously there is tactics where they come first. They are a very strong team in this year's football manager, but they were only two points off. First place. So second is still amazing. Uh, unfortunately, you didn't get any players in the top stats for goals. Uh, average rate, and you got Telles, your left back, for third rate in there, 7.35. And then Telles again for player of the match, um, eight came first. And De Gea, 21 clean sheets. So again, defensively, very good. If De Gea is getting those clean sheets, it means the shots aren't coming to him, goals aren't going in. And that's what you definitely what you want. And 21 games out of 38, you didn't get a goal. Scored against you. Can't moan at that. It's brilliantly defensive, this tactic is. Uh, let's have a look at the competitions then for Manchester United. So, Champions League won it. Won the Champions League is what you want in every single test. All right, 1-0 against Liverpool. Fantastic results. FA Cup, you won that as well. In the final, Man City 2-1. All right, obviously a lot of Reds fans are going to be happy of getting one over the blue side of Manchester. So yeah, they got the double. It's a shame they didn't win the league, but getting the Champions Cup is awesome. Awesome. Carabao Cup, you went out against Bournemouth. Not awesome. Um, so yeah, you should have probably won that match. 
So squad then best player was Teles, all right, two and eleven assists, nine player of the matches, forty six, seven point two nine. After him, you got one Basaka, one and eleven. Your right back Fernandez played as the uh, winger on that right hand side, but he shouldn't have played every game. No, he played as a midfielder as well uh, on a couple of games, but his best position was on that right. Uh, Lindelof two and one, then Maguire four and one as well. Your biggest goal scorers. Rashford with 23. He also probably varied throughout the whole lot. Yeah, left, right, and striker, but mainly on that left hand side. All right, you want to use his pace, and his pace was absolutely fantastic. 22 goals, always cutting in when Cavani probably took a little step back into the uh, attacking midfielder role or deep line forward and slotted it into Marcus Rashford quite a lot. I've seen that quite a lot on the highlights. So, uh, yeah, good going for him. And then you got Fernandez. Uh, Daniel James as well, another faster winger. All right, has got the pace. He's not really got much else. So, um, is he going to be your first bet? Maybe not. All right, when you've got the likes of um, Martial. All right, yeah, there's him. So, yeah, it's each to suit. People like all that pace, nothing else. Like Walcott. <laughs> uh, yeah, so 23, 19, 13, and 11. Your biggest creators in the Manchester United team, Fernandez, Pogba, uh, Juan Bissaka, Telles and Martial, uh, 6, 11, 11, 11, 12. So decent numbers again, all right? At the end of the day, Marcus Rashford got 23 goals in all competitions and that, in real life, would be acceptable. Let's face it, it would be. It's realistic, it's good uh, and very defensive. So pretty good going there. So team report then, on a whole, uh, you, you're scoring more goals on average, your shots more on average, conceding very good there as well. It's brilliant seeing a tactic that is absolutely fantastic when it comes to defensive capabilities. Uh, scoring then, where are you? Yeah, aggressive and clinical, that's where you want to be. All right, on this side, once again, you're Manchester United. If you're not in aggressive and clinical, you're doing something wrong. And then goals scored, 70 play shots, two, eight, eight powerful shots, one lob, seven headers, one free kick and six penalties. The assists in the last 50 matches, 16 came from set pieces. The rest of them were all from open play. And conceding, yeah, we're in quiet and impenetrable. Again, that's exactly where you want to be for a team like Manchester United. Um, and sometimes with tactics that are going all out attacking, you're becoming leaky. Leaky. <laughs> you're getting a lot of goals scored against you. The double-edged sword, just who scores more. Uh, and that's a lot of tactics working that way at the minute. So this tactic seems fantastic in the sense that it's doing half decent when it comes to scoring. All right, you're doing well on the XG, on the average, um, and you're doing well defensively as well. Uh, so the goals scored against you, 15 play shots, 11 powerful shots, one lob, two headers, one free kick, and three penalties. So there we are for a little bit of the analyst report, if you fancy having a little bit of a read. Uh, so next up, we are in Spain with Barcelona and Valencia. How did they do? Squad, boom, there we go, Barcelona. They come first, come on, it's Barcelona. They were always going to come first, especially with the plug-and-play tactic. They did absolutely fantastic. Valencia are the ones that overperformed. All right, they are predicted eighth, I believe, seventh, seventh, right? So they're a mid-ish to high team, and they came second. They beat the likes of Atletico and Madrid, uh, Real Madrid, all right? Awesome, awesome. Come in second place. Yeah, you are nine points behind uh, top spot. So there's a little bit of a difference there, but that's just the quality of Barcelona at the end of the day. So Valencia did very well. So let's have a look at some of the player stats then. So Messi, 37 goals in the league came first. Average rate in Messi and Gaia, 7.66 and 7.44. Uh, first and second, Gaia, Messi again with the assist, 14 and 11. Player of the matches, Messi, Was and Gaia, all right, 13, 8 and 8. First and joint second for both of them. And then we've got uh, the Valencia goalkeeper with 21 clean sheets. Is that Sillison? And then Marc-Andre Ter Stegen for Barcelona came third with 18 clean sheets. So again, fantastic when it comes defensively to clean sheets. That is absolutely incredible. Um, let's have a look at Barcelona's competitions then. So, European Champions Cup. We know they didn't win it because Manchester United won it. But they got to the quarterfinal, got knocked out by Bayern Munich. And the score was over both legs, 4-3. Uh, Spanish Cup, fifth round, got knocked out by Mallorca. Oh dear. Sometimes the defensive does not work. Uh, yeah, Mallorca beat Barcelona 3-1. And then the Spanish Cup runners up, Spanish Super Cup. Uh, actually, Valencia beat Barcelona in the Spanish Super Cup. Valencia uh, got, got themselves a cup there. A bit of silverware, 3-1. Uh, that ended. 
So let's have a look at the squad then. So best player was obviously Messi, 43 goals in all competitions, 15 assists, 5 chances created with 15 player of the matches. After him, you've got uh, Trinket in there. You only played one match, not counting them. Sergio Roberto, 43, 6 and 8. Uh, Lenglet, 5 and 1. All right, your centre-back, so doing well, 7.12. Biggest goal scorers, you've got Messi, Ansu Fati, Griezmann, Dembele, uh, Roberto, 43, 16, 13, 10, 6. And your biggest creators for Barcelona, Messi, Coutinho, Dembele, De Jong and Roberto, 8, 9, 9, 11 and 15. So yeah, Messi, apps, don't matter. You can put any tactic on Barcelona. Messi just seems like he can do it all. Met what a player, right? Every single game he played. Oh, no, international is a midfielder. So he played a lot of games on the right-hand side and a lot of games as a striker. And he actually did very well on that right-hand side, much better than the striker. Scored 14 as a striker, 29 on that right-hand side, and 11 assists. So if you're going to use this tactic, his best position is probably on that right-side winger. Um, and he did very well there, obviously, compared to his striker role throughout the season. Uh, let's have a look at the team report then. So on a whole, you just completely dominated everything. All right, your passing's better than the average. Your goals smashed it, conceded very, very low compared to the rest of the league. Shots, you smashed it. XG per game, smashed it. All right, you're just better. better. You are just the world-class team in that division at the end of the day. Uh, scoring then. So, yeah, aggressive and clinical. You're right there, which is where you want to be. Again, it's Barcelona. If you're not in aggressive and clinical, something is wrong with the tactic. Uh, goals, 77 play shots, 11 powerful shots, 1 lob, 6 headers, 3 free kicks, and 11 penalties. Uh, assists in the last 50 matches, uh, 20 came from set pieces, and the rest of them were all from open play. And conceding, and again... We are where we should be with a team like Barcelona. Far, far down in this bottom left-hand corner, in quiet and impenetrable. And the goal scored against us. 23 play shots, 3 powerful shots, 3 lob, 7 headers and 2 uh, penalties. So, yeah, very little goals again. At the end of the day, 26, 29, uh, 30... Six, 37, 38 goals. 38 goals in all competitions in the last 50 matches. Nothing. That is nothing, is it? Yeah, all good. All good in the hood. Why would I say that? <laughs> uh, yeah, so again, look at the analyst report for a little bit more information. Next up is the overachievers then. Valencia, second place. Absolutely fantastic. How did they do in the competitions? We knew they won the Super Cup because we saw that with Barcelona. And in the Spanish Cup, knocked out in the fifth round by Real Madrid. And the score was 3-0. So that's a shame. Okay, so regardless... I would take everything as a win for Valencia there. Coming second just to Barcelona, winning winning some silverware. Uh, it's a shame they didn't get a little bit further in the Spanish Cup, but you can kind of forgive them up against uh, Real Madrid. Squad then, best player was Gaia, 5 and 16. You got Oas, 5 and 9, 7.29. Your biggest goal scorers for Valencia was Gomez, Jason. And is that Guedes? Guedes? Um, 17, 6, and 6. Your biggest creators as well was Gaia, Oas, and Musa. 16, 9, and 6. And obviously, 4, 4, 3, 3, so, and so on. Uh, team report for Valencia on an average. Again, all right, it's not massively out, but conceded per game is very far better than everyone else. This is one of the first times where it was consistently great when it comes to conceding goals you're not conceding a lot through every team that i've tested which is defensively awesome if this is a tactic that you guys want if you want to play a defensive tactic where yes if you're a great team you're still going to score a lot of goals if you're not a great team you're still going to do well defensively all right you can see it you can see the consistency with all the teams it's it's, it's great all right, and they still had over average on shots and goals and xg and passing which is also fantastic scoring uh, where are we here? So we are in the aggressive and clinical, whereas well, obviously we're a lot further behind to Barcelona, but we're still in that section. We're still in that part of the box, which is where, which is awesome. All right, your goal scored, 41 play shots, 14 powerful shots, 13 headers and six penalties, and assists in the last 48 matches. All right, 24, 5, 6, 7, 27 came from set pieces. The rest of them were all from open play. And conceding again, fantastically we are in the quiet and, and impenetrable um which is where you want to be i say it all the time you want to be in the bottom left for defensive top right for attacking okay simple as that uh, goals scored against us 21 play shots eight powerful shots one lob two headers 
That's it. That's it. 29, 30, 32 goals. 32 goals for a team like Valencia in the last 48 matches. Big thumbs up. Defensive capabilities for this tactic is fantastic. Okay, let's have a look at... Uh, no, we're not. We're not looking at anything else. We're done. What am I on about? Okay, so have a little look, have a little read of the analyst report. Okay, every team did defensively amazing. All right, decent results, decent finishes, great cups. Manchester United, we've got the Champions League. Fantastic tactic by FIFA Kingpin. All right, this is the brand can walk tactic. Hopefully, uh, you download it and have a great save with it. All right, this is Tucker Jobs Gaming. Please subscribe and like and comment if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye.